Awesome. Welcome, everyone. It's on our IG Live. Awesome. And Alana, we're ready to go. You're ready. We got these, like, I cruised up through the desert on 395 on Sunday and stopped at this really cool, like, little desert gypsy shop and got all these new, like, cedar sticks and Palo Santo. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. So welcome everyone that's on Zoom and IG Live. Um, let's let's drop into our bodies. So go ahead and get seated comfortably. You can be on the ground or in a chair, wherever you are. And then just take a moment to close your eyes. And start to bring your awareness from the external to your internal space. So noticing the sensations in the body, the breath. Starting to be a little bit more intentional with your breath, let's take a deep breath in through the nose. When you feel like you're at your maximum, see if you can sip in a little bit more air. And then hold your breath at the top of the inhale. And find a slow release out the nose, slow exhale. just noticing any areas that you might feel holding in the body see if you can let the shoulders drop away from the ears a little bit and then press your pelvis into whatever you're sitting on the ground a chair and from that pressing down see if you can find some length some lift in the spine up towards the sky we'll take two more breaths in through the nose filling up all the way biggest breath you've taken all day sip in a little more air Hold the breath. Slow exhale, let the air come out the body and feel your energy just drop a little bit more into the seat. It's final breath here, deep inhale through the nose. Getting super full in the lungs, the rib cage, feel that expansion, that fullness in the body. Hold the breath. Even super slow release, let it all go. And just starting to blink the eyes open, letting the light fill back into your awareness. And we're here. <laughs> we're back. That was awesome. Thank you, Hannah. Mm -hmm. um, thanks, everybody, for joining. Uh, I'm Brian Chaplin, the founder of Medicine Box. And uh, we've been doing these uh, shift series and now moving into uh, what we call flow series. And I'm joined by a uh, cannabis industry a friend and actually personal friend too because I've gotten to know Hannah over the last like four years uh, just through the uh, cannabis industry down in LA and uh, had the pleasure of a friend uh, leasing out her beautiful um, cabana style apartment uh, just right behind Abbott Kinney in Venice so definitely got to spend some quality time down there and um in April, Medicine Box, uh, we've been doing a lot of content and thinking and processing and developing um, ourselves as well as, let me turn this volume down a little bit, and ourselves for uh, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, physically preparing uh, for post-pandemic, you know, enter back into society, into the world, into, into culture. Um, and I thought it'd be great to have Hannah on here, who is a yoga instructor, but also has a very uh, neat way how she uh, teaches her yoga classes in her business, um, Lit Yoga down in LA, uh, by uh, incorporating and infusing plant medicine rituals uh, with traditional yoga practices, meditation, and that amazing uh, grounding breath work. Uh, so, 
This uh, conversation is going to be a discussion about the benefits of meditation and yoga with plant medicine uh, with Hannah Mason, the founder of Lit Yoga. And we're going to follow that up with a nice yoga flow. So I hope everyone stays on uh, that's, that's listening in and watching for a, a nice little flow. Uh, and if you have any cannabis or any other plant medicines you'd like to imbibe in, I'd say imbibe in them and <laughs> prepare yourself go <laughs> yeah go for it um so hannah i uh really wanted to start by um getting to know uh you a little bit more uh and how you got into uh yoga practice and and uh yoga teaching and training uh, as well as how you merged kind of cannabis and, and plant medicines in that practice and uh, where you've taken it. So in 2017, I opened Lit Yoga Studio in Venice. And uh, for many, many years, um, I've been studying movement, dance, yoga, somatic healing, understanding connection between mind, body, spirit. And those practices have been so pivotal for me, so healing in so many ways. And when I saw the movement towards recreational legalization, um, I was so aware of how much both the cannabis plant and plant medicines as a whole were about to become a lot more accessible to people, um, which is incredibly exciting and beautiful. And at the same time, it requires a level of awareness and education uh, that I think is really necessary when we start to bring these plants more into mainstream or into the greater the greater culture. Um, I guess we're still having some. No, we're good. Okay, cool. Um, so, yeah, my I've really had these kind of two pieces of like movement, yoga, dance, and then starting to study herbalism and tea ceremony. Um, and then just being a longtime lover of cannabis and always having it as a plant ally that has helped me through many challenging times in my life, um, it was so evident to me that this merging was just naturally gonna happen. And so I wanted to create a safe space where people could come and explore merging plants with their yoga practices or with breath or sound baths. Um, and, and yeah, it's really just taken off since 2017. We had a studio for two years offering weekly classes, workshops, um, really just building a community of people that wanted to learn and were open and curious. And in about 2019 or 2018, we started offering teacher training. So certifying yoga teachers or wellness practitioners that were curious about incorporating cannabis into their teachings. and really giving them a foundational understanding of science and how these plants work in our bodies. And then also um, calling in more of also the activism energy around how to bring this knowledge into the world in a way that is honoring of its history and also um, acknowledging social justice and social equity um, for all the people that have uh, been penalized for, for having this plant around. So. It's really been a multifaceted company that's emerged. It's really a community that's emerged. Um, we have over 50 certified lit yoga teachers throughout the US, Canada, Italy. The core of it is education and transformation and healing and giving people the space and the tools to access that healing within themselves. So when you have your classes, Hannah, uh, do you have your guests of those classes bring their own um, medicine to the class or do you provide you know, the, you know certain types of medicines and what forms are they in do you smoke do you have an edible tincture what's that look like you know because I, I as I'm thinking of it it's like it's nice when you're in a community like that or any type of plant medicine circle or ceremony um, that everyone there is utilizing the same medicine to create kind of more of that like interconnected vibe in, in class or ceremony. 
Um, yeah, so we started working with, okay, so we started working with um, a bunch of different brands and companies that uh, were offering new products in, in 2017, 2018. So in our classes, we provide everything that our students are gonna be consuming from medicinal herbal teas um, to the actual products. And we always have a lot of options because that's part of really what we're trying to spread in terms of education is like there's so many different means of consumption and different ways are going to work different for different people so we all have a different endocannabinoid system uh, we all have a different immune system like there's just so much individuality when we talk about medicine and healing so uh, we would always have options for people to smoke they could vape uh, we would usually have tinctures so they could add drops to their tea uh, there was always CBD options only if you weren't interested in the psychoactivity part of the plant. And then we we usually shied away from edibles, mostly just because um, early on we kind of learned through trial and error that edibles truly interact very differently in each person's body. And so with like an hour, hour 15 yoga class, uh, it didn't always make sense for an edible to actually affect someone during that class. So we had a couple instances where people would eat something and then they wouldn't feel it until two or three hours later. Um, so we sort of took edibles off the table because they're not as um, direct or predictable in the way that they're gonna interact in the body. Um, well, that's great. You know, personally, I like to use uh, cannabis um, sublinguals in meditation and you made you made an uh, interesting comment that you know some people take take an edible they don't feel anything they probably go through the class leave the class two hours later they're they're driving on the 405 and they're floored um, for me a sublingual is like fast acting so I usually take it time like my meditation uh, take it about 10 15 minutes before do some ba basic qigong and then drop into a deep meditation with um, with headphones and use some sort of like binaural uh, music to kind of keep me centered there. And cannabis and music are like sand in the beach. And uh, that's, that's how I like to use it. Uh, personally, I don't think I've ever done a uh, yoga practice um, imbibing with cannabis. Mm. I think it's all just been like straight, but like sound healing, meditation, qigong, breath work, all the other modalities, um, cannabis and other plant medicines definitely uh, enhance and optimize uh, that practice. So, um, mm. so how has lit yoga been during the pandemic? So this conversation really is about, you know, preparing all of us, myself included, for like getting back out into the world and back out, you know, mingling with humans again and being mm -hmm. around others in, you know, confined spaces, whether that's a restaurant or a cafe or yoga studio. So um, have you been doing any preparation with yourself or students to really take it up a another level to prepare ourselves uh, in, for that mental, spiritual, you know, emotional uh, preparation to get back out into the world. I mean, it's, I know LA is a lot different than it is in North Lake Tahoe, where I'm at. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there's, there's going to be a whole other probably pandemic from the symptoms of isolation that people have been experiencing or like social anxiety or um, maybe not feeling the best in their physical body because they've been at home not exercising and eating or uh, maybe their you know mental health has suffered a bit so um, I really feel like what you have to offer out there can really help you know, a lot of people you know get back out into the mix in a holistic way yeah yeah absolutely I think um Cannabis has always been a connector plant. Uh, I, I see it in, you know, when we were able to host live classes 
you know, sitting in a circle with a group of people and, and drinking tea and passing around a joint. Um, there's just this very uh, communal and, and connecting element to it. And so I think that there's been a lot of fear over the last year um, around being close to others. And so, yeah, we're definitely taking our time easing back into what is it going to look like to gather in person and be able to do lit yoga classes, um, especially with the consumption part, because we want to be a lot more mindful about uh, people having their own, you know, their own tools. Maybe we're not as comfortable passing around a joint like we used to be. And so um, we're definitely looking at kind of more smaller, um, smaller groups and gatherings where they are going to be more intimate um, and definitely a little bit deeper because I do think this year has taken a toll on, on many and to be able to provide community when we felt so isolated I think there's going to be that little like we got to get the wheels turning again and get everything greased up uh, for people to feel really ready to step back into that space um, it has been beautiful to see the virtual space bloom for us over the last year we did two different virtual teacher trainings and it was really cool because we were able to have people that haven't been able to be in person for a training in California or New York um, come from all over. So we had people in like Georgia, Tennessee, Canada, Italy. Um, yeah, so it was just really amazing to see this, you know, this like lit yoga community extends beyond LA and it really is becoming this global community. And uh, it's, it's people that are open to better understanding how nature can support us and how we can support nature. Um, and I think you know, a lot of people have kind of been forced in the last year or two to look at like what really matters to you. It kind of brought all of our priorities to the surface of like what's what's really important to you in your day to day. And if you're isolated from others or you're limited in terms of travel or your activities, like what becomes the, the things that nourish you and having access to nature, being able to be outside, get fresh air, like all these things that we kind of took for granted at some point. Yeah, we're definitely kind of easing back into gathering in person and, and definitely looking forward to hosting events and retreats um, in the coming months to years. And I think that people really need to be held in community right now because I'm, I'm definitely seeing sort of the, um, the effects of, of feeling more isolated, whether you physically were isolated or not, just the, the collective experience of being more alone in the last year. Definitely. And I like uh, what you said about how nature can support us and we can support nature. Nature, That's part of Medicine Box's mission is um, to co-create interconnectedness with human health and happiness while harmonizing a relationship with Mother Earth. And a lot of the, uh, th the components of nature we've definitely, as humans, have taken for granted. And I think Part of that reprioritizing or reshifting uh, what is important in our lives has been this like big draw to nature and really people are moving out of the cities uh, definitely people are buying vans and rvs and just jumping on the road and going wherever they are i mean and here in tahoe uh, there's been a massive influx of folks from san francisco from you know the tech industry and and beyond and and that's also like kind of tested my own uh i'd say like triggering like there's this one side of the coin they're they're but they're married on each side of a coin is that i want people to experience nature i want people to get out in nature and consume nature in a good way but then there's parts of me that get triggered where folks that don't really understand nature uh, come here and they're either littering or uh, not really respecting nature. So there is this like learning curve, I think, in this education to um, adapt to what Mother Nature has to offer. And I'd imagine it all starts with, you know, self and community and even probably some of the work that Lit Yoga is doing. And I had no idea um, that 
lit yoga has like expanded that much uh, across the country. You know, California is definitely trendsetters, uh, definitely in cannabis, but then it's like you look at LA and LA is like such a massive trendsetter. And I think that's amazing um, to incorporate um, all these different healing modalities uh, as we emerge from the pandemic, but then also as like cannabis and the hemp industries are, you know, emerging, evolving, being more widely accepted. We have, you know, psilocybin, like look what just happened with SB 512 and California. Uh, there's a lot going on right now. And I really think that it's uh, a big time for all of us as humanity to kind of lock arms and realize that we're all part of this earth and uh, it's up to us to uh, get through this pandemic but then take those uh, new priorities that we have to heal ourselves and heal the earth and I know that might sound a little bit woo woo but that's the big message I think underlying the pandemic and COVID like so so many people were focusing on like the numbers and the CDC and the deaths and you know wearing masks are you a vaxxer are you anti-vax it's like well let's look at what the mental like the fallout of like the mental health like mm. over 80,000 people in 2020 died from drug overdoses that's the most recorded in history and it's still counting like the yeah. domestic abuse the child abuse the loss of jobs the economic insecurity um you know we don't hear too much about that and i'm very outspoken about you know mm -hmm. sobriety and, and recovery and you know addiction and it's like that is extremely important and i think if there's one positive message that COVID did with the isolation it's helped a lot of us reprioritize and it helps a lot of the people that are already like in the greater wellness industry whether you're a yoga instructor or plant medicine product developer or light worker whatever you want to be uh it's it's our time to shine right i think it's our time to shine and collaborate and get back out into the the, the world in a, in a good way and mm -hmm. help the people that you know may have been working 70 hours a week at their corporate job and have never really had anything else going on other than an office job for like two decades and okay, seeing sure. a lot of people up here in tahoe hannah that are like i'm not going back to facebook i'm not going back to google like i'm taking a pay cut to work remotely like right. this is the dream this is the life it's like right. i've been living here for almost 20 years and you know and it's like i'm very blessed to be in nature and so I definitely want to like keep extending that message to people, um, you know, to get back out in the nature, but then use the synergistic, you know, tools that we all have, yoga, breath work, meditation, and plants. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the future. So yeah, thank you for doing what you do. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, I agree with, with all of that, that, you know, you saying like, there's, there was so much emphasis on the, the deaths, right? You know, COVID, who's dying, how many people are dying, and then like almost a blind eye towards what are all the other sort of consequences of this time and, and mental health being a huge one, um, you know, alcohol, drug abuse, all those things. And I think it's like, cause I, I love to just use the analogies that we see in nature or the patterns we see in nature to kind of reflect back to us and even you know even in our own bodies right like we are nature and we forget that we're like plants have immune systems we have immune systems and when we drink plants or we smoke plants or we eat them our immune systems are actually communicating with each other and so we're getting to adopt certain um essentially powers like superpowers from you know from plants and so much of how a lot of our systems work in the body and in in nature and we see it with like um, forests and the ways the trees work together is all about balance and homeostasis and coming back to are there equal is there enough water for all the trees are there equal resources being spread and um, I just love that like image or analogy for kind of where I see 
things needing to go and having this more holistic approach or like whole approach to our world where yes COVID is a thing yes it's real it's a virus but like let us not get so zeroed in on that one part of our world that we forget about yeah. like just baseline getting fresh air every day drinking clean water getting enough vitamin d and sun like and it's like we get so um you know yeah hyper focused on something that we forget about zooming out and kind of seeing the whole picture and i think that's going to be a big shift in the way we approach health and healing and sort of like even that idea of you know the people that are from facebook or google that are like even the money isn't worth it anymore if i'm not enjoying my daily existence and so starting to kind of look at that work-life balance or just see things as this whole circle as opposed to just yeah driving at one focus and not really yeah. knowing like what's the purpose behind this so right that was a big part amazing, of it amazing reflection and i think like one of the most simplistic analogies of like the human connection with nature that I think of is, you know, the air that we expel is the air that the trees breathe in. And then they use that and grow and expel. You know, it's just right. like, that's so easy. It's like, right. oh, we're, we're related. <laughs> when you think that we're not connected to nature, it's like, well, where's, right. where do you get the air that you breathe? Right. Like, it's, right. There's a lot of people that don't understand that. And, right. um, and that, you know, the, the getting vitamin D, I mean, every morning, you know, I, get out on on my deck and I just take you know big deep breaths in of the fresh air in the morning and mm -hmm. let that sun hit my face and it's just a great reminder that you know I'm alive and yep. <laughs> so many people don't have that and yeah uh, I definitely have taken it for granted uh, in, in my past and uh, now it's like nope no more taking that for granted thank you trees thank you lake thank you water thank you earth thank you everything for mm -hmm. um, keeping me um, alive all the time now <laughs> with lit, lit yoga Anna mm -hmm. uh, what is like what what's your favorite or go-to uh, method of consuming cannabis and like what what product do you like that makes it like very um, extremely effective effective fun and and fluid like what what would be your like recommendation for anyone out there listening yeah so a couple of things i mean i really enjoy smoking um i feel like it's a really nice direct way and and it actually um i think when done with intention and, and kind of awareness and moderation it's actually a really great way to link us to our breath because we're having that practice of inhaling and exhaling and for someone that maybe isn't so aware of their breath, like smoking is actually kind of a direct way to get you, you know, in that process. Um, so I find that that can be really helpful before a yoga class. Um, if you have any like lung sensitivities or reasons why you don't want to smoke, I find that tinctures are kind of like the next best direct way. Um, they're going through the mucous membranes. I know Medicine Box has had some incredible tinctures on the on the table and and being able to take something that kicks in pretty immediately um, and also why I love tinctures is they often are made with other plants as well so it's just a really um, beautiful way to get that medicine that's pretty direct um, and you're usually getting some good oils and fats as well which help um, you know integrate it into the body more easily um, so those two are kind of like my favorite smoking or a tincture and then i think something that's kind of overseen often that maybe less people know about is just the power of topicals and getting that um you know on on the body application when we're talking about yoga or movement like one of the big things is being able to address inflammation or pain in the body that's going to make your practice feel a little bit easier or maybe a little bit less like rigid so being able to put topicals on and get sort of that sensory stimulation that you know the tingly feeling um that can be really great to just kind of bring you right into your body if you maybe don't want sort of like the psychoactive experience so those would I, be kind of my top three i like that i have never thought of the topical mm. uh, for that and i recently pulled my back out and this mm. yoga session that we're going to do is going to help i hope i just mm -hmm. got out of 
acupuncture before here. So oh, nice. Wor working through, working through that that men. But I ne I've been using a lot of topical on my back, mm -hmm. and yeah. like between like just the sensation of it and the aromatherapy of all the nice oils in there, uh, I can totally see how that would really enhance um, a yoga practice. You know, my favorite you know part of yoga is at the end of the class when I'm in savasana and you know the instructor's coming around with lavender oil that's, that's yeah <laughs> yeah it's the so, prime place to be <laughs> why not have that like the whole hour of the class yeah <laughs> uh, really. awesome. and then yeah like totally different experiences too it's almost like what type of experience are you looking for I mean what smoking there you could have you know very cerebral effect mm -hmm. depending on the strain that you're using or like a tincture where where I prefer is you know it's definitely more in your body um, mm -hmm. and and you know the cerebral part is like I think that's the best for meditation um, mm -hmm. or even like a movement meditation like Qigong mm -hmm. I'm gonna definitely try that topical thanks for thanks for pointing that out that's something I didn't even think of um, yeah, absolutely. So, and and you've been doing um, online lit yoga. Uh, have you been doing like recorded modules and getting those out to clients? Because yeah, we are giving away um, one of your one-on-one -on -one digital class and herb yeah. concept. So I want to talk about that a bit. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, kind of early on in COVID, when we started to get the teacher trainings going online. Um, we also brought in our some of our teachers that have gone through the training already to start teaching online. So I think we had like six classes a week going for a good chunk of last year. Um, around December, I think what I was noticing kind of within our, our team is a lot of people were feeling really burnt out um, kind of in the virtual space. And so we put a pause on um, like regularly offering virtual classes and kind of instead shifting our focus to prepare for this next year and, and sort of getting to start to gather with people in person um, at our studio in downtown Los Angeles. So, um, but yeah, we do, we are still offering more like one-on-one -on -one privates virtually, especially for people that aren't understanding what products might work the best for them or getting more specific and individualized into like a little treatment plan for them. So that's what we're offering away. Um, point we'll probably get regular virtual classes going again and kind of have that hybrid um, lifestyle going where we get to do in person and then also have some virtual offerings because there are people all over the world that um, are looking for this and, and are curious so the virtual space is perfect for all of that that's awesome um, I did the first virtual somewhat class that I did Whoop, did I lose Hannah you still there, Hannah? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, okay. Oh, I just changed my screen up. Zoom yeah. sometimes is like, well, it's like me, you, both of us. Right. Uh, <laughs> I did, uh, I don't know if you've heard of medicinal mindfulness, but a little shout out to Daniel McQueen in Boulder, mm. um, Colorado. Medicinal mindfulness, he wrote a book called Breaking the Gate. And he uses cannabis as his uh, main uh, plant to do guided meditations and a lot of like somatic awareness and, and trauma work. And one of his practitioners um, offered an online uh, psychedelic sit, he calls it the psychedelic sitter school and mm. I can just go and I was like, oh, I'm not sure about this virtual thing, but uh, mm -hmm. tried it out anyway. And wow, it was amazing. Like, because you're on there in the comfort of your own home and there's other people joined in the comfort at, in, of their own home. Mm. And it was really awesome. It was a full on, you know, guided uh, meditation, two hours with a, a very like uh, intentional playlist of music that was quite a journey up and down and all around. And, uh, I was like in it for like, maybe four hours after playing my guitar and just super just in the zone with the um with the cannabis effect in mm. the the meditation so i think uh, for anyone that has never done any sort of you know virtual uh, class um what you know other than learning um 
you know, this is definitely a good way to go and fit into your schedule and you can do it in the comfort of your, your own home or bring your roommates in, your boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, uh, and check out what Hannah has going on. So it is 1245. Um, we were going to do a yoga flow, right? Yeah, let's do it. By Hannah. So what Should I'm going to do, do, I'm going to jump back on your live. Okay, cool. Are you still on? Um, I took it off because it wasn't. Was it? Was it? It, wasn't, it was kind of glitching, but let's but let's put it back on for the movement part. I think that'll be easier with sound. I think so too. And then um, anyone that's in the Zoom, if you have any questions, uh, drop them in the chat. I love flagging questions, and no question uh, goes unanswered and think outside the box throw some throw some good ones at um at hannah and then if anyone is getting in their home office home yoga studio whatever it might be join us in this amazing yoga flow that we're going to do what is it about 10 15 minutes hannah yeah it would be a little kind of a little short glimpse um and i'll keep it a little bit more on a a beginner basis just in case anyone here is uh, newer to yoga but it will be we'll do a little bit of heat building but also some nice stretching and a little more restorative as well um, so if you have a yoga mat at home you can set that up otherwise just find a place that you're on the ground and okay hopefully you can hear that music in the background so we will come into starting in a child's pose so just sitting back towards the heels, walk your arms out in front of you. Let your forehead soften in towards the mat. And just starting to connect to your breath. And as you're doing this, think about the space from the very top of the spine all the way down to your tailbone. So it's like you're breathing into the length of your spine. And then from your child's pose, start to walk the hands over to the right side and stack your left hand on top of your right. Pull your left sit bone back and take a deep breath into the left side of the body. Just walking yourself through center all the way over to the left side, right hand stacks on top of the left. And then keep thinking about pulling your right sit bone back towards your heel. Take a deep breath into the right side of the body. Starting to walk your hands back to center and then shift yourself forward coming to all fours. So if you have sensitive knees, you can always put a blanket or some kind of little padding underneath your knees. And then setting up with the shoulders right over the wrists, you can find a little micro bend in the elbows, especially if you tend to lock out your elbows. Take a little bend there and then starting to lift your chest and then lifting your tailbone. So finding a big arch through your spine and then on your exhale, rounding through your spine, pull your belly button up towards your spine, drop your head and your tailbone. Nice little bend in the elbows on your inhale coming forward. This is cow position. Big breath in, exhale, cat position, rounding through the spine. Just one more forward and back. Exhale, rounding. Nice, and then starting to free up your movement a little bit. So you can shift your rib cage to the right or to the left. You can start to let the head circle out. I don't wanna lose my AirPods. Circling the head, circling the tailbone, letting the hips start to move around. So really tuning into more of an intuitive movement here. So you're not thinking too much about what is the pose? Am I doing it right or wrong? It's more just freeing up the body to start to guide you. 
So part of our inlet yoga, we talk a lot about just the innate intelligence of the body. And when we start to tune in and listen, which the cannabis plant can really help us listen more closely to the messages in our body, your body kind of tells you where it needs to go to release tension. So start to take your hips more in a circle. We'll move back towards the heels like we were in child's pose. And then coming all the way forward, you can let the hips sink forward a little bit. So take a couple circles. And again, not thinking too much about it, just letting your body move. Coming back to the breath if you've lost it. And then sitting all the way back in a child's pose again. This time walking your fingertips forward, come onto the tips of your fingers and then lift through the palms, lift your So on your next breath in, shifting forward, coming back to all fours. And then we're gonna start to tuck the toes, lift through the knees, let the low belly engage and then coming into a downward dog. So the hips come high. You can walk yourself out a little bit longer if you need. And then we're thinking about reaching the heels towards the mat, letting the hips go skyward and then letting the whole spine lengthen, dropping the head between the shoulders. You can just shake your head no and then yes a couple times, releasing in the neck, the jaw. And then from here, go ahead and take a deep bend through the knees in your downward dog. And then start to straighten through the legs, reach the heels towards the mat. So we'll go for two more, coming to the balls of the feet, deep bend through the knees, lift the hips high. And then straightening through the legs, reach the heels down. Nice, ground through the left leg, right leg lifts all the way up. So on your exhale, pull the knee towards the nose. Inhale the leg up and back. Nice, my leg's getting cut off, but you can see knee to nose coming forward one more time. Up and back, last time stepping the foot through, setting it up in between your hands if you can, and then lower your left knee down to the mat, untuck the left toes. Nice, walk the hands up to your right thigh, and then just leaning into the hips here. Now you start to reach the arms up over your head, taking a full Anjaneyasana. This is a moon lunge. And then keeping the arms lifted, start to shift the hips back, flex through the right foot, reach the arms back behind you. Yeah, nice. Coming forward back into your lunge, reach the arms all the way up. Big breath into the chest. And then hands come all the way back down. We're gonna tuck the left toes, lift the back knee and then step the right toes back to meet the left. So coming into a plank pose. So shift your weight here for a moment, side to side, just helping stabilize in this pose, right hand to left. Nice, and then lowering the knees down, chest and chin come to the mat, keeping the butt high. And then on your inhale, belly comes to the mat, press down through the tops of the feet, little cobra lift, lift the chest. Rolling yourself all the way down. Hands come under the shoulders. Press yourself back, child's pose. Shifting yourself forward, all fours. We'll come back into our downward dog. We're going to take the left side. Hips come high. Grounding down through the right foot. Lift the left leg up. It's on your exhale, knee to nose. Strong belly. Inhale, up and back. Exhale, knee to nose. Last one, long leg. And then step the foot all the way through, right in between the hands, or if you can't reach, scoot it forward. Right knee comes down, untuck the right toes. And then walk yourself just up onto your thigh. Nice, opening in the hips, deep breath in, reach the arms up. And then on your exhale, floating the arms back behind you, flex through the left foot, find a little fold in the very top of your thigh here. Nice, inhale, coming forward, find your lunge again, reach the arms up. And then plant the hands, tuck the right toes, 
Left foot's gonna step back to meet the right. Finding your plank pose, shifting the weight side to side a couple times, pulling the belly button towards the spine, and then start to lower down to the knees, chest and chin, inhaling to your belly, roll the shoulders back, lift your heart. Lowering yourself down, press all the way back, child's pose. a couple breaths here in your child's pose. And starting to roll yourself all the way up to seated. Just come to sit on your heels. And then you can shift your hips to one side, swing your leg. A couple seated poses. Some twists, good for digestion and the belly. So start to pull your right knee in towards you and then cross the right foot over the left leg if you can. Okay, sitting up nice and tall, right arm reaches high. Take the right hand right behind your sit bone and then left arm follows coming into a twist. You can lock the elbow to the outside of the right knee or you can wrap your arm, pull your leg in and then feel the twist from the low belly. So I'm twisting all the way up the spine, eventually maybe looking over my right shoulder. On your inhale, find a little bit of length in the spine. On your exhale, twist through your belly. Start to unravel yourself and then just take a little counter fold towards the left side. Just drawing yourself back up. Take the right foot to the inside of the left leg and then turn your whole torso towards the right bent knee and then a big side bend to the inside of the left leg reach the top arm up and over maybe you try and reach for your left toes keep rotating the heart through the arm start to draw yourself all the way up and then take the right hand right behind you let the hips lift up roll onto your right shin just release the hips skyward on your exhale, sitting the hips back and down, extend the right leg long. We'll take the other side. So bend the left knee in, crossing it over the right leg. So really grounding down through your pelvis. Feel a little press down. Inhale the left arm high. And right arm follows. So either elbow on the outside to help you twist, or you can wrap your arm. back to your breath, slowing down the inhale, and then use the exhale to twist a little bit more. Start to unravel yourself, take a little bow, a little bend to the right side. And then taking the left foot on the inside of the right leg, letting the knee drop down as much as you can. And then turning your torso towards the left knee, right arm comes to the inside of the right leg. Take a big side bend. Just drawing the shoulders away from the ears. You can move through your fingers, move through your wrists. So for me, like all, all my yoga practice is, is truly a dance. All movement is a dance. So it's like finding those little movements, those little transitions that feel good in your body. It should it should be pleasurable, right? We're not just forcing ourselves through. Go ahead and place your left hand back behind you and then just letting your hips rise up, rolling to your shin. Give yourself a big opening in the chest, the hips. And then on your exhale, sitting back down. And this time left leg is gonna extend to meet the right. And we'll take a forward fold with both legs. Lace your fingers together, stretch your arms up, draw the shoulder blades down the back. And then on your exhale, folding forward towards the legs. Okay, so if you can't reach your toes, you can just rest your hands wherever is available. If you have a scarf or maybe a yoga strap at home, you could always take that around the base of your feet and then you kind of start to walk yourself closer and closer. 
So go ahead and take a halfway lift. Just come up a little bit. Think about pressing down through your pelvis and then extending out of the spine. So finding a little bit of space between your vertebrae and then folding in a little bit deeper, rounding in towards your knees. Starting to roll yourself all the way up. And then bending through the knees, take the feet to the mat. We'll take an altar pose, offering our practice up to something greater than ourselves. Lift the hips, open the heart, maybe release your head back if it feels safe on the neck. So on your exhale, lowering the hips down, scoot them towards the heels. And then walk your feet forward a little bit. Take it super slow, coming all the way down to your back. across the right ankle over the left leg and then pull the left leg off the ground spread your hands behind your thigh so this is a little figure four kind of upside down pigeon keep pressing that right knee away so you're getting that stretch in the outer right hip nice. and then keep crossing the right knee over the left and then letting both knees drop over to the left side taking a twist Turn your gaze to your right hand. Start to draw yourself back to center. Uncross the legs, take a happy baby, grabbing onto your big toes or your ankles, whatever's available, and then kicking your heels up towards the sky, letting the knees come wide apart. So you can rock yourself a little side to side if that feels good. And then starting to cross the left ankle over the right thigh this time. Thread your hands behind the right leg. And then pull the legs in towards your chest. Again, keep pressing this left knee away from you. So you're getting that stretch through the outer leg. Start to cross the left knee all the way over the right, floating the feet back towards your mat, come into your twist. So both knees drop to the right side. You can turn your gaze over to your left arm. Big breaths into your low back, your belly. Start to draw the knees back up, low back comes towards the mat, and then uncross the legs. One last time, happy baby. Kicking the heels up, giving yourself plenty of space on the inner thighs, and then you can play with straightening one leg at a time, or at least just kicking the foot out, kind of let that rock you side to side. and then letting the feet float back towards your mat. We'll take the soles of the feet together, letting the knees come out to the side. So if you do have any yoga props at home, this is a nice place to slide blocks under your thighs or under your knees for a little extra support. It's taking a couple of breaths here with your soles of your feet together, your knees out to the side. And then you can either stay here for our last final breaths, final moments, or you can come into a more traditional full Shavasana where the legs come straight, letting the arms relax alongside you, or you can take both hands to your heart if you're wanting a little bit more connection today. And then coming back to the breath, Remembering 
Brian's beautiful reminder of our relationship to trees and to plants as this cyclical relationship of our breath, right? So we're inhaling the oxygen that they produce for us. And then we're exhaling the carbon dioxide that we give back to the earth. So just through the simple practice of your breath, remembering how interconnected you are to the world around you. How you're a beautiful part of this ecosystem, this whole universe that we live in. We're not separate from it. We play a significant role. And then truly give yourself practice coming out of the doing space and into the being space. slowly starting to let your head rock side to side releasing in the neck and the jaw and starting to wiggle your fingers your toes reaching your arms up overhead kicking through the soles of your feet stretching your body from head to toe you can bend through your knees, curling yourself over to whichever side feels right. Take a moment here in a little fetal position. It's your mini rebirth after your death, after Shavasana. And then as you're ready, you can start to press yourself up to a comfortable seated position. And we'll close with one of my favorite mudras. So mudra means a gesture or a seal. So it's a, there's many different ones we can do with our hands to call in different energies. They're also very much connected to our meridian channels. If you know about Chinese medicine, they all, it all plays a role. So this one is the Lotus Mudra. So you'll line up your pinkies and your thumbs together and then let all your other fingers just extend away. And so, we there's a uh, saying no mud no lotus right so this beautiful lotus flower grows out of the muddy depths of a pond and i've been just reflecting on this a lot given our last year and it's felt muddy like it's felt messy it's felt hard it's felt dark um, but without the mud the beautiful lotus can't grow so just acknowledgement for those hard times acknowledgement for the darkness and knowing that we need both to, to prevail and to exist in, in humanity. Um, so you can go ahead and take your lotus right to your heart center. And then just sitting up nice and tall, feel free to close your eyes. And just feeling the energy, the gesture of this seal, this mudra. And 
and then letting the palms connect the fingers connect coming into anjali mudra so this is heart mudra and just ending in gratitude thank you all for being with us today and for being open to practicing exploring your body um that truly is what yoga is it means union so it's bringing together us it's bringing together yourself your mind and your body and your spirit um and it's it's self study it's building a relationship and awareness to yourself and with yourself so that when you're connected and you're clear here you can enter the world and and show up more strongly and offer your gifts more clearly so um thank you all for being willing to explore and then just last we'll draw our thumbs up to our third eye our seat of intuition this is incredibly important these days with so much messaging and noise out there quiet yourself enough so you can hear your own intuition it is often often to hear it so being willing to listen may you always hear this voice may it guide you on your journey and thank you we bow acknowledging each other just remembering that interconnectedness and if you have any questions feel free to write them in the chat or you can unmute yourself happy to, to answer anything about the practices or what we talked about earlier as well thank you hannah that was amazing yeah my pleasure wow. speaking of priorities that should be a priority for every one <laughs> day whether you're working or you have the day off you don't need to get out of work or have a day off on the weekend to fit yoga uh into your schedule especially a nice little 15 minute flow like that or meditation um or breath work and just to reflect on what Hannah said you know when you're practicing uh these ancient practices uh to enhance that inner voice and that intuitive guidance or something i like to say is find the guidance in the silence mm. uh to block out the noise of the world it's very busy out there as a teammate on medicine box says the digital onslaught of media at all <laughs> angles all day long it's important yeah. to uh know what your inner voice is telling you and to listen to that and these practices are here for us any time of the day so um next steps here uh thank you nikki for for joining uh this will be this is recorded uh we're going to be making some audiograms and some sizzle reels and i think what we're going to do is probably just put that yoga flow right into a nice uh sizzle reel and probably add some music behind that so anyone that was uh entered their email will be getting that in next steps uh and attendees uh that signed up uh will be entered for a free one-on-one -on -one digital class and an herb consult with lit yoga um as well as the full suite of uh one cap products from Medicine Box that's for one for sleep one for gut health and overall vitality they work really well in combination and definitely in combination with uh, a nice little yoga flow uh, that's worth over $200 uh Ooh. contact there is uh, brian at medicinebox.green and hanna uh as a palindrome there uh at lityoga.com and then info at lityogastudio.com uh if anyone is interested in our wellness muse program uh Hannah is one of our wellness muses so thank you for joining there you can reach out to uh, Alana at medicineboxwellness.com affiliates at medicineboxwellness.com uh the sign up is like 15 to 30 minutes pretty easy uh you get your own um unique link to share with friends family and you get 15% uh commission for whatever products that you sell but that's really not the the most important part of being a wellness muse it's really just spreading the message like this and the the gifts and offerings that you have in the world and uh being part of a larger interconnected network that uh, has the like minds and hearts and souls so Uh, we'd love to have you on board and also stay tuned uh for the next uh events that Medicine Box is doing we're doing these uh bi-weekly now um so 
It's been really fun. Our next one is with uh, another one of our wellness muses, uh, Roanoke. They're awesome uh, folk kind of rock band uh, out of, uh, I believe they are in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. And they're just awesome and doing some great things in the world. So um, if there's no more questions, uh, we could probably send this off with uh, another namaste. And thank you all for joining. And Hannah, I will uh, be following up with you on some other things there. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks Wonderful. Again. Thank you so much. It was, that was so nice to fun. be with you all today. Yeah. Take, take all of this with you for the rest of the day. You know, we got plenty more daylight left and uh, looking forward to the summer solstice here in another six weeks or so. So um, mm. thanks again.